Last week on the show, we met a group of youth who are the definition of impressive when it comes to hot culture. Well, last we zeroed on tomatoes, having realized that people seriously here in Uganda use tomatoes in, as vegetables. One of the, be the best thing on them, they take like almost, almost like three months. You start earning. This week, we meet them again. And at the center of it all is Abu Baker, who has discovered the gold in May. Uh, the advantages of growing this DK or any other hybrid of maize is that for them they put on two cobs and those cobs are big and after harvesting uh, in terms of kilograms they are so heavy. In Uganda, where fertile soils meet the golden rays of the sun, a crop reigns supreme, maize. A staple that has touched the test buds of all, maize is more than just a crop. It's a thriving market force that knows no bounds. Join us as we delve into the heart of Kamuli district to a maize farm that stands as a testament to the power of agriculture prowess. Meet Abu Beka, a diligent cultivator whose labor of love stretches across these expansive nine acres. Kalisawe no kasoli, kilo mutuwaro, katifo tumuteka kwa mstowa, ya tumulinda mwe miezi ngevili, tumutunda lukumiru nana, lukumiru sambu, katusubira wano milioni kumina mnana wano, watuli kati wano woka, a season yemu, I think it's 1.5. To go and be to get a gram to a time, pack a season. We have a contract. We have a million in that time. If we to come, we have to find a million in some of the other. I think we have to contract it. We have to buy a certain number of nakul, nakul, nakul. It is a commercial. No, we have to contract. We have to buy a deposit. One million time. We have to deposit one million in bill. We have to buy some money. 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 One thing I would first advise you is to first know the type of maize you're going to grow. Uh, after realizing the type of maize you're going to grow, even the type of soil, we are going to intend to plant this maize. Uh, it is always so vital to first know where exactly are you going to plant. Is it a swampy place? Is it lome? Or it is a bit sandy? Why do I say like that? You may find that uh, some types of mice are not good in clay soils. You may find that some, t some type of mice are not good at loam soil. Uh, our place is a bit clay. Uh, now, they are, we, we looked at and uh, we had to look for a good hybrid of mice. So now here we planted uh, DK. Now this particular variety will give you about two years of corn per stalk and grows exceptionally fast. Now that is something to die for. Uh, the advantages of growing this DK or any other hybrid of maize is that for them they put on two cobs. They put on two cobs and those cobs are big. And after harvesting, uh, in terms of kilograms, they are so heavy. You may find that uh, a sack of, of DK may end up making like one, 100 kilogram plus than other types of maize. So the growth rate is high. Uh, even the, some people who mill them, their posture is so good. Sometimes also I advise farmers who intend to start growing maize that it's always better not allow any weed in your garden until the period of harvesting. Uh, you know, sometimes we have some pests also that destroys this maize, though it has not yet put on the cobs. It is always better. Anyway, those pests sometimes they come when this maize is around at the knee level. 
So get some pesticide spray. Once you can get maybe like a rocket, no rocket over smiles. So if that 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 pest is inside the maize, when it feels that smell, it can suffocate until it dies dead. Maize will be able to grow well. Embarking on the maize growing odyssey demands intentionality. Abu Baker stresses the importance of defining one's purpose, whether for commerce or sustenance. Saizo buunga, kati obu kati tu parkinga kila tano tano, kati wana sawa tu sugiro sa uchikumi. Kaunga tu saplayinga muna ma ma na na maolo se ragari muna, tu saplayinga muna. Jinja, kamuli. Busia, oya galok tundem peke, oya galase de zama ngu, ti kamoto kayo no twala e busia. If you have love for farming and you match away that now this is my business where I'm going to get money. Like it or not you are going to earn. But some people don't take this this farming as a business or as a job, but farming is a job. You may even find someone that for me I don't have a job, how yet you have land and you are farming? That's a job. So if you take it as a job, at the end of the season, you are going to earn. Just within three months, if someone is able to earn to like 10 million, that, don't you see that there is some good money in farming? So it is always better you sit down and calculate, then maybe there you realize that in farming there is some good cash. For those aiming at the market, meticulous bookkeeping becomes the compass steering through the investment and eventual yields. We began with a small portion. Uh, then as we began with a smaller portion, remember we have our book for records. And it's always good to have record keeping. So we always sit down, or for the first time we sat down, and we began with one acre. So we saw what we, we, we invested in and what we removed out of the garden. So there is the way how we compare our things, and we saw that there is some good profit. And after realizing that there is some profits here, we, 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 we approached the mosaic, the owner of the land. Now we are renting all these acres of land here. And what's the story behind these seemingly irregular maize rowers? Abu Baker's smile lights up as he reveals that this season was an experiment, a trial of sorts. The impressive yields have paved the way for more organized, carefully thought out arrangement next season. <laughs> And Mama Banga Manet, try to a Galataka Terera. Catalita, the Catuja put up foot to Billy Billy. Catus to be done to whatever to them foot to Billy Billy, when on Yakuna Kilomit Wale Billy. A canoe of Ampadel Kumirukumi, million is young Billy. Now we'll take a short commercial break, and when we return, it's the markets and the expert opinion. Waste? No, not in Abu Bakr's world. Every part of the maize plant finds purpose, from the sturdy stalks to the kernels nestled within. A lesson in resourcefulness and sustainability. We are farmers and we look after birds and other projects like, like, like pigs, cows, they also consume this maize plant. So our target is at least to see that it is time to come or next year we start a shop for produce. You find that Tony and Abbakal in Kamuli, they are, one of the, they are one with the biggest shop of produce. Or maybe, uh, and we have also another target of at least having a shop of feeds, feeds for animals those nutrients we need also to have it with time to come it's one of our, it's one of our plans on our expert opinion today we are privileged to be joined by an agronomist a true authority after engaging with farmers on various scales the expert opinion with our very insightful expert, Solomon. You're welcome to the show. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, we have these youth in, 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 in Kamuli. 
and they are growing maize and um, they've specialized uh, in DK, the variety DK. So what, what, is, what is special about this variety? DK maize has about four different varieties and uh, each of the varieties is suited for uh, certain situations. We have those that are suited for uh, drier environments or drier periods. We have those that are low to mid-term maturity in terms of a maturity period but what is very special about all these varieties is that they are hybrid varieties and what we know about hybrid varieties is that they've been specifically bred either for yield or for disease and insect pest tolerance or for tolerance of uh, drought or drier conditions to be able to ensure productivity even when uh, the situation is a bit tough. So maybe one of the reasons many farmers actually adapt hybrid varieties is their ability to produce a lot more. We have open pollinated varieties which could give or which farmers have been growing for a long period of time giving yields from about 500 kilograms per acre to a maximum of 1.5 tons. But with the introduction of hybrids, farmers are able to get yields as high as three or even four tons per acre. So the varieties that are hybrid actually are more productive than what we would call the open pollinated varieties. But it's very expensive. It's, it's good, yes, but it's quite expensive. So are there alternatives that would yield just as much or even more? Certainly, there are alternatives to DK, but the alternatives to DK are also hybrid uh, maize varieties. The reason hybrids are expensive is because producing hybrid seed is quite a long process. Hybrid seed is bred by crossing different parents. You can have a two-way cross where you cross one parent with another to produce one hybrid that uh, incorporates uh, desirable characteristics of both varieties. You can also have a three-way cross that crosses more than one parent. So what makes them expensive is the different requirements and the time it takes to actually produce the maize seed. And because it also produces quite a lot, it's, it's literally value for value. Um, the farmer complains of pests, especially when the crops get to knee level. So how can this be mitigated? Maize is fortunately a low maintenance crop. Many maize farmers experience insect pests as the major challenge. Fortunately, maize is not as affected by disease as other crops. The most common insect pest in maize, of course, is lately the, the maize fall armyworm, which is an invasive pest. The maize fall armyworm was introduced here in Uganda, and uh, it is traced back to the Americas. The fall armyworm can actually devastate or can destroy 100% of the maize field. And this fall armyworm can attack at any stage. It can come as early as when the maize has uh, just sprouted and it can attack all throughout. One of the biggest challenges is it has a very short life cycle. We are talking about 25 days minimum from egg to the adult. But most important, it is the larval stage of uh, the fall armyworm that uh, destroys the maize. So it is very important, first and foremost, to scout go through the garden routinely to establish whether there are any early symptoms of infestation of the fall armyworm. Early action is extremely important when it comes to control of the fall armyworm. Other remedies uh, to the control of fall armyworm could actually include the use of uh, pesticides. But before we even get to pesticides, during scouting, if one is able to identify the earliest symptoms and be able to look out for the larvae in the maze, especially in the maze hole, you can actually pick it out, squash it, and be sure that not yet another adult will be able to emerge out of uh, the, the pupae that will come out of the, lar the, the larval stages to lay eggs and later reinfest the garden. Once that is done appropriately, we expect that someone should have uh, substantial control of uh, this maize fall armyworm. But if one comes in a bit late, it is imperative, it is important that they think about the application 
of the most potent insecticide on the market and there's quite a variety of those from dudu fennels to striker and from also botanical extracts or botanical pesticides that have the ability to deter further feeding and uh, prevent the, the adult moth from laying, continuously laying eggs uh, in, in, the, in the maize hole. What is very important also when you are trying to control the fall armyworm, especially while using insecticides, is the timing of application and the targeting of the application. We know that the fall armyworm, the larvae of the fall armyworm actually hide inside the maize hole and the feeding habits of the fall armyworm help it to hide away from the applied insect pests. So when you get in as early as possible with the right insect site, targeting the right places, one is able to keep the fall armyworm at bay and prevent losses that would otherwise occur. So say I'm thinking of venturing uh, into maize growing, do the seasons matter? Seasons actually matter for maize production, <coughs> especially in Uganda and probably other countries where there is a variation in, in seasons in terms of length and possibly the amount of rain that is uh, anticipated. Our situation gives us an opportunity to grow maize almost twice a year, but we've, we know that there are farmers that grow maize throughout the year. And these two times a year are the first rain season, which starts around March, and then the second rain season, which starts around August. The first rain season is usually shorter and the second rain season is slightly longer. When thinking about growing maize, when making decisions about which varieties to grow, this is a very important consideration because one should be able to grow or choose seed of a maize variety that is able to align with the length of when the rain is expected. Because if, for example, looking at the first season which is shorter, would recommend that one looks at varieties that are that have a shorter maturity talking about a maximum of three months and looking <laughs> at the second rain which is usually longer one then would choose anywhere from a short term maize variety to, to long term we're talking about 90 days to up to about 140 145 days and that therefore can accommodate uh, varieties that take a lot more time or longer time to grow so the, the, the importance of the seasonality is that they sh that should inform or that should advise the farmer on the kind of variety to grow. This guides the farmer on whether to select a short-term or long-term maturity crop or variety. Well, thank you so much, Solomon. You heard it from the experts. Amidst the fields, a heartwarming sight, the youth. Hands in the soil, embracing agriculture as a bridge to their future. For them, farming isn't just a means, it's an achievement, a connection to their aspirations. You know, when we realize that uh, why Busoga now is experiencing a lot of dry spell is that people have cut trees. So, uh, we talked to our museum here who is renting us this, 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 this portion that we want at least by the time we leave this place when we have made a serious forest here. And we are also trying to encourage people to plant trees at least at, at towards the end of their portion of land, in that at least we can fight this dry, dry spell that is affecting Busoga and entire Uganda. At Enyanya, we have a county also. We have a county in the bank. Finance Trust. As we bid farewell to the maize-covered landscapes of Kamweli district, we are reminded that each seed sown is a step towards abundance. We always tune on NTV, especially on Saturday. It is adding value to some of us. I always watch this show Every Saturday, I don't miss. However much I miss, at least I can go on YouTube and at least create time for it. Why? I want at least also to earn from fellow farmers. Next week, our Seeds of Gold's venture takes us to Chankwanzi, where dairy farming unveils a tale of passion and innovation. It's 
always humbling and a pleasure to have you on the show. That's our show for today. Don't forget to keep the comments coming in. Hashtag NTV Seeds of Gold. Thank you for watching.